Okay, got an 11 by uh, 14 black canvas. I stretch myself. Here how tight it is. Much tighter than what you buy in the store. Anyway, today we're going to paint this. I'm going to show you how to paint it. It's going to be really quick and easy. I did a video of this yesterday of um, how to apply the uh, this gesso. All this that you see on here, the black, the can black of the canvas is gesso. All the trees are gesso. The background is all gesso. So there's nothing on here but gesso at the moment. We're about to change that though. Okay. So now that we're ready to apply the colors, the rest of this should go fairly easy. So let's do it. And you'll see how all of this, well, let me kind of explain a little bit in case you didn't see the other video. It's just the one here. Got a bunch of trees. They're different colors way back in the back. I think maybe people painting forests, lots of times they just slap a few, three or four trees on there. And, and forests are just really not like that. So I, I've tried to put as many trees in here as I could. Now I'm applying liquid clear. There's a lot of tooth in this canvas, which means the surface is not s smooth at all, which is actually how I wanted it. I like to make my landscapes. I like a lot of tooth on my canvas when I'm uh, doing landscapes, because it just really helps you to, you know, build up the the grain of the forest and the leaves and dirt, and, you know, all that stuff. So. All right, I'm going to wipe this down, just real slightly. Not, not a lot. I just want to get any excess off of there so that liquid clear. Okay, I'm going to start off with, let's just start off with some yellow. So I got, I got a little bit of this gambling yellow left. I think, is this called lemon yellow? No, cad yellow light. Where did I get lemon yellow? I don't know. All right, so anyway. So now I'm just going to, I'm going to pull a little bit of this out and then just tap the end of my brush. I don't want to pick up a lot of paint. I'm not really loading the brush up a lot. So you see here, there's just a little bit of paint on here. We're going to start over in this lightest area. Just kind of like a circle, kind of paint a circle. And most of this forest up here is all in the is a lot in the light, so we'll just kind of let that yellow kind of go on out that way. And I was trying to decide if I wanted this to be a path or I think I'll make a like a creek creek bed out of it. So a little bit more. Okay. Now let's just take some of this yellow and with some sap green. Just kind of Just adding a little bit of color in here. So we're letting the yellow that we have on the canvas, you know, kind of do its thing. And uh, we're just adding some green to it. <laughs> Not really trying too much to cover up much of anything. I'm kind of ignoring these trees for now. We'll, we'll recover those in a minute. And when we do all of this background work that we're doing is going to jump back out into the jump back into the forest instead of being out here on the, the edge of the canvas where we are. Okay, now I think I'm going to clean the brush. I'm going to keep this, I want to keep this painting fairly simple because I want you guys to try this. And I'm going to try to use Bob Ross colors, you know, cad yellow, titanium white, sap green, to get you to kind of, you know, 
give it a just give it a try. Give it a try. All right. So I'm gonna pick up some alizarin and crimson. Same way. Tap 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 tap. And then I'm gonna start down here. Now this is gonna be a lot. This is a lot more powerful than the, the yellow. It's got a stronger pigment. And that's okay. That's okay. You can use the X stroke or you can just tap, tap, tap it. I'm going to do a little both. You'll notice as we're going today, I'm probably painting with both hands. I, I'm, uh, I have an injured shoulder. Um, uh, the whole virus thing has thrown off all of my physical therapy, so I can't. So I can't get surgery and I can't get PT. I can't get anything. I just have to kind of suffer with it for the moment. So. Yeah, make the best out of it. A little bit more shadow right in here. Just by just by adding a little more color. Okay, that looks okay. Now I'm gonna take loser crimson and some of this yellow. Make a little bit of an orange color. So you might be able to see that. And we're just going to kind of brush this in. You don't have to do this. I'm just kind of. Let's clean the brush and then we'll blend this and then we'll start adding some more color. Maybe a little bit of highlight to start. And then we'll then we'll work on the trees and then we'll come forward with the water and all that kind of stuff. Alright, so let's get let's blend this a little bit. I'm just using an X stroke. Not really trying to pull this paint around too much. Okay. Let's go ahead on this side. And put this put this alizarin crimson in here. Just cause, just cause. I haven't figured out what I'm going to do for the water yet, but we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Okay. All right, so we got a little bit of groundwork laid here. Now let's use some titanium white. Just to kind of tailor some of this up. Now, titanium white, unlike everything else that's on here, the lizard crimson, the sap green, the cad yellow, uh, the gambling cad yellow, um, which means the orange too, is all transparent. All that paint's transparent, which means the paint that I had on here before, you can see through that. You can see through to it, through the other paint I just put on to the original gesso that I had on. So I'm going to pick up, I'm going to pick up a little bit of paint. I got a little more paint than I want, but that's okay. I think we can work with it. 
I'm going to start right here on this tree and I'm going to put a little bit of titanium white in here. This will give this forest a little bit of a glow. We'll add some more stuff to it later to make it even, even a little bit more spicy. We want that glow because we're going to highlight some other stuff here in a minute. All right, that looks pretty good. That looks, that looks good enough. Okay. Now, I'm going to blend this just, just a, I don't really need to blend it too much. But I'll tell you what let's do. Let's go ahead and let's take a filbert brush. Now you can use any brush. I'll tell you what, instead of using a filbert, I used a filbert in a video yesterday. So today I'll just use this angle brush. <coughs> <coughs> you can use a flat, you can use a fan brush. <coughs> Excuse me. You can use a any kind of brush you want. I'm gonna take some. Titanium white. I'll come up here and I just want to pull a sunbeam. So I'm just going to take it, I'm going to lay it down on here, touch it with this canvas, <coughs> and then I'm just going to pull it straight across. Just like that. All right, let's pick up a little bit more of this white. Okay. All right. Now, I know it looks looks a little rough right now, but don't worry. We're gonna, we'll fix it. All right. So now, I've got this clean uh, one and a half inch, one one inch uh, brush, and it's but it's not dry. It's clean, but it's not dry. If you rub it on your hand, you can still see mineral spirits. That tells you it's not dry. All right. little change of props. At least I had the foresight today to bring paper towels down to the studio. All right. Now, we're just going to take this and Just to brighten that a little bit more. Let's go right back up in here. The head of these things. Just head of these sunbeams. Okay. Now we can start pushing things back. And bringing other things, pushing other things back, and bringing other things forward. So let's do. Okay. So you can do this with a Q-tip, or you can do it with a brush, or however, you, whatever you're most comfortable with. But what we're gonna, do, what I'm gonna do, is the the black trees that I have in this painting, I'm just going to go back and I'm going to take the paint off of them. And when I do, what it's going to do is pull those those trees back forward in the forest. So it's going to, so even, well, the overall effect is pushing the trees forward, but the, you're, what you're actually doing is making all the other stuff move back into the forest. And you don't have, oh, it's got a lot of teeth. A lot, I forgot all about the teeth. All these all this tooth in this canvas. That's okay though. Now you don't have to actually do it this way. You can you can just paint them and I'm gonna paint them. I'm gonna paint these trees in a few minutes. I'm just trying to take some of the extra paint off. You could also use I wonder if I have that nearby. 
I'll show you if I have it. Oh yeah. You can also use one of these. This is a a paint eraser. Um, mine, uh, my particular one, is made by Wilson Bickford. I don't know if it's I don't know if Wilson actually makes them, but you know they're Wilson Bickford's brand. So you know you can just kind of scrape the paint off with those. And so, you know, if you want to do that, you can you can do that. I'm not gonna bother. I just do it with a Q-tip because that's what I'm the easiest. That's I like that. Although I don't really like these new Q-tips. Got a new box of Q-tips. Okay, now by erasing this tree right here, or right not erasing it, but effectively taking the paint back off, the sunbeams are gonna pass behind that. And the same thing with this tree right here, the second tree right here. So they're passing a little bit behind this tree, and right now they're passing in front of this tree. So if we let the sunbeams stay out there, the, the tree itself is pushed back, but we want the tree to come forward, and we want the sunbeams to go behind it, and it can still hit this bank over here from that angle. So yeah. I usually use a smoother Q-tip, I mean not a smoother Q-tip, a smoother canvas for this, but I didn't think about that really. But anyway, so learn from that. All right, let's do some, let's do some leg work on the trees. Well, we want to be careful because we want to bring it forward. We kind of want to like leave all the rest of this alone now because we've got, but we are, there are a few highlights and stuff that we're going to put on. And I think maybe we'll do something with this tree right here too. So let's start. Let's start with the trees. I will use a small filbert for this. You can use any kind of brush you want. Whatever, whatever's most comfortable for you. So I'll just start off with this. I'm fairly comfortable with pulling in a sharp edge onto a onto a filbert, but any brush that I can also do it with a straight. Hang on, let's, we'll, let's finish this tree, and then we'll we'll do it with a straight brush too. And I'll show you that. The trick is is making sure when you load your brush that you create a chiseled edge on the edge of the brush. So. When you look at this brush, you can see how sharp the edge is. It's so sharp you can barely see it, the edge at all. And that allows you to get up here and do these tight branches. So I was going to show you flat, and then I forgot. So here's a flat. It's a small flat, but we'll just take it, chisel it up real sharp, and we'll just do this branch right here. You see, it can be done. It's just a matter of how do you like to do it. So I'm being relatively loose with this brush. I'm not, I'm not trying to trace right back over what I painted in gesso because, you know, those that vagueness of the tree will will really translate well back into the forest. So I've got a branch right here. I don't know why I painted that tree so uh, um, straight. Usually my trees are not very straight. I like them to be crooked. Now this tree I'm painting with 
burnt umber, and dioxazine purple. Dioxazine will add some darkness to the brown and keep it from lightening up like it does over here with the yellow as it hits the edges. I will lighten it, but I want it to, I just kind of want to lighten it myself without the paint helping me too much. We remember tree branches are not very straight. I think sometimes we get a little too carried away trying to like make a perfect tree and there's really I think all the trees are perfect. They're all perfect in the fact that they're not perfect. Now in this part right here, I'm going to bring a little bit of phthalo blue in with the purple and the burgundy. The burgundy. The, with the purple and the um, burnt umber. Burgundy. <laughs> All right. Let's kind of sneak that in there. This tree. So I told you I could paint it with a filbert or I could paint it with a flat and then I started painting with a flat and I just kind of stuck to that so you know, just do whatever with whatever you want to do with. Whatever brush is the most comfortable for you, do that. Because if you can handle that brush then there's a quite a bit of the things you can do with just a single brush. I've seen, I've done quite a few single brush paintings and you know they're just you can just add a few branches if you want. Alright now like I said earlier we're gonna leave most of that and it's back in the background we're just gonna leave it back there. We're going to bring some of the stuff forward here in the front though. So let's clean this brush. Get this brush nice and clean. Get all that brown paint out of it and that purple. All right, now we're going to take, um, I could use a little sap green in this. So before we start putting in the detail, I'll tell you what let's do. Let's take, I think I'll make this, this kind of a really colorful, really colorful painting. So I got Thalo Blue over here. I'm just going to take Thalo Blue, scrub it in right here. And you see it start to define that edge. And that's good. And we'll pick up where the reflection hits. Let me get that way. Okay. So we'll go right there. And then add a little bit of it over here. Alright. That's fine. And that was fairly easy to do. So I just used a round brush to do that. Again. Pick whatever brush you like. I, I'm just trying to show you a variety of brushes, you know, that you can you can use to do different kinds of things. Um, we'll pick up a fan brush and do some of this do some of this under uh, coat stuff or underbrush stuff. I'll get up, I'll come up with the right word eventually. I keep shopping around for words. All right. So I got some um, uh, lizard and crimson. I'm gonna mix it just a little bit with some of this thalo blue. Kind of like start to lay in some darker color. And I haven't highlighted this tree yet because I'm gonna be 
tapping all around it. So I know this color might look kind of dark to you right now, but hopefully, let me put the highlights in, it'll brighten it back up. So, some, not completely, but some. All right, let's just take a little bit of that and put it in here just in a couple of different places. Okay, now, we'll highlight the trees. We'll do this really quickly. We don't want a lot of highlight because we're going to put, well, we're going to do a little bit of highlight, but we're going to put some leaves and stuff in. So, you know, we don't have to do a, a bunch of highlighting, but let's just do it with this brush. So I'll just pick up some of this yellow and we'll just use that to highlight these trees. Now, you can do this with. Um, white, you know, you could add a little bit of white there. Maybe a little bit like here. You don't want to get too carried away with the highlight. This tree we're not going to highlight very much because, you know, it's really kind of silhouetted this way. See what we can do now, highlighting wise, with a little bit of titanium white over the top of those dark colors mixed with a little bit of yellow. And we want to kind of be, <coughs> excuse me, I'm having a drink. Uh, we don't want an excessive amount of highlight in this painting, but we do want some. So right here, when the sunbeams hit, now here I'm using. I haven't changed the color, but I'm just, I'm just kind of letting the fan brush just barely touch the edge. Let the paint just kind of wear out to the edge. All right, a little bit more. I picked up some color on the brush, but not so bad, not much. Get this one sunbeam that's in the water. We're going to do something with it in a minute. Okay. Very, very light right here. Okay. So, all right. Now, I want to put some tree branches in. I'm sorry. 
I'll get it straight. I swear I will. Maybe before the end of the video, I'll get my words straight. I'm going to put some leaves, some leaves and things like that in. So, let's do that. And we can, I'll use a, I don't know what kind of brush. I'll use some kind of brush. So trust me, I won't use my fingers for this. Let's get some, um, what do I want to use for this? Let's use some sap green. Let's try sap green across that. There's a background. Maybe a little dark number with that. But tone it down just a little bit so it's not so candy color. Coming forward, I'm going to pick up some sap green for this tree, and I'm going to darken this color a little bit like that. And there's not too many leaves on those trees. some leaves up in there back in the background because they're muted So this yellow that we have left. Here. We use that. Alright, so I'm gonna make a little bit of medium with this yellow. And I'm gonna load this brush up. So now if you're an acrylic painter and you're watching this, I would recommend some channels to you. Um, Chrissy Canvas Art, uh, Grayscale Painting, both do, both do acrylics, do a really good job with them too. too much back there because I want it to stay. All right, now I'll just use the same brush because I've got paint on it. And we'll start pulling the water across here. Now I'll erase that little bit of land right there and just let the water go on across. Under onto my tree a little bit. That one. So 
Let's just no big deal. We'll fix it. some dark into this tree as well. A couple really dark spots. Like right in here. Okay. And that's okay over here. All right. Now, I need to I need to take care of this one reflection in the water. We'll do that real quick. It won't take us long. It's right there on the edge of the water. We will put the we will put the water lines in just a second though. But let's just add, let's just have a sort of a Can I make those sounds. I'll decide if I like that before we get done. Alright, let's put some more lines in. We'll use, we'll use a knife to do that. I'll just use this one. So the water lines will be on the far away side. Now you want to keep these horizontal. Don't let them get don't let them get slaney on you. Because they can. And if they do, it'll make your water look like it's running off of the canvas. So. But you can see the advantages of the extra uh, tooth here. Now here I'm going to push down really hard and kind of spread this out just to kind of indicate a, a shallow spot right there. Alright. Let's just finish this off now. I'll just take this and then I'll smooth it just a little bit. Okay, we can change it. Pick up another filbert. Pick up some blue and crimson and some blue. We'll kind of we'll push a bush in there without much trouble. Just like that. Just a little bit of highlight to that. Okay. I think I'll script line a couple a little bit of things in here. Just a couple of little weeds and things. You go over there. Alright. So I'm taking a script liner.
tell you what we're gonna do. Let's do this. Let's see. Let's see about this. Yeah, that's better. Just drawing up some weeds right in here. We just added a little bit of titanium white to this. So this is a little bit dark. Which I wanted it to be a little bit dark, but I want these details to show up. We gotta do a little bit of lightning on these. So yeah, yeah, okay. Gotta do what you gotta do. All right. There we go. I think we'll leave her be. Don't piddle. By the time you piddle, you could have gone ahead and painted something to do. All right, guys. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.